he's much more favorite favorite i don't think he's much because of the tide it's much because of the of the of the shift. of probably the wind shift um and inside the bay is is well you have to play the wind shifts you have to keep an eye on that right right hand side but you have to play the shifts so in the end only the tide when in certain times of the year when it extreme tides uh when there is no wind so and it's more on the winter uh you probably will feel it more but mm -hmm. for me it's in the sv20 is a bit neglectable you have to take into account other 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 stuff that are way much more important while you're sailing here yeah hey um it's mike here i just wonder can you talk a little bit about just the if people were doing a couple of regattas spread over a few weeks. The ability to store a lot of stuff somewhere convenient without having to, you know, like I don't know whether you can do it at the sailing club or what the logistics are around that. Okay, I can answer that because, you know, uh, Silky Skies, we have, uh, because, well, we, we, we started basically as a quick resume of what we do. We, we started with eight boats, okay? And the idea was to provide sailing classes, boat rentals, corporate events. And, and, and then because we had eight boats, we start running our own events like the WOW Regatta and the Portuguese Sailing League in a, in a, in a, in a thing. Well, with the eight boats, uh, it comes a lot of stuff. It comes, you have to maintain the boat. So we provide maintenance to every, to every boat on the fleet. We have to store our boat. So basically we rented the warehouse and the warehouse now is full. So we have to go for a second warehouse. So replying to your question is yes, we can, uh, we can, we have plenty of, of space to, to, to store boats, to store sails, to store uh, stuff for people not to have to facilitate uh, people coming here um, a, a lot of times without an, an, an traveling light, let's put it that way. Thanks, Michael. Um, it looks like a few people heading to Cashcation. Your your jet, Michael Cooper. So uh, yeah, seems like there's quite quite a lot of interest. It was, it was cheap. <laughs> um, I just wanted to move now to a bit of a discussion around the women on water, Portugal. Um, I understand that it's a, a Danish concept, um, but with the main aim being to get more women on the water and networking on the land. Um, and it's, it's one of those um, programs that it's, is expanding across um, cities and sailing communities. Um, Catalina and Vasco, can you tell us about your experience with, with that? I, I can start a bit about the concept and then Carolina can, I think, can talk about her experience. I think it's, it's interesting. Well, as I told you before, we, we end up investing straight away in eight boats and, and our idea of my, I'm, 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 I have this uh, very simple idea that the boat is like a truck and when the truck is stopped in the garage, it doesn't make money. So we have to, to, to create all types of ex excuses for people to race and, and we have to grab um, so we do the same classes events and one of the, of the events that we we grabbed and it was quite quite interesting uh, is the wow concept is women wow stands for women on water and it's this Danish concept and um, basically you you target the women population and 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 and, and and it's interesting, the, 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 we did it the first time and it was quite interesting. I think we picked, we end up having almost all the girls that sail in Portugal. We, we end up, I'm, I'm joking, but it's like, we, we end up having 12 teams racing. That was quite, quite a success. And, and there was 50 women and from the whole spectrum. So we had sailors like Carolina that are involved in the, in the Olympic uh, project. Uh, but we also were able to reach women that, uh, that uh, used to sail, and they stopped sailing because of their professional life, their kids, whatever. And they were able to, 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 to join us. Also, we attract uh, a foreign, uh, one and a half foreign crews to come. So, and, 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 these, and the concept is, is simple. Basically, you, you have the boats, you have the sails, you create a nice event, and you make sure that they come and that they interact between themselves. The, 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 the small details is like, is interesting, is that you can, target uh, sponsorships for these audience, okay? So we have the sponsorship from Clarence, and he, uh, that is the, the, is the brand for, uh, that sells uh, makeup and uh, other stuff. And, and, uh, and basically, it is very important for their communication to reach their, their, their potential, uh, potential clients. And, and, and the women appreciate because 
the details, the sponsorship, the, the, the merchandising is totally oriented to them. So basically you create this amazing event that is super easy for, for people, for women to participate, where they're going to meet new girls or the girls that they didn't see for a long time or the old rivalries. Um, and you're just going to make sure that they have a good time over the space of two or three days. So we were the second country to adopt this, uh, this concept after Denmark. Um, and the Sailing Champions League, uh, that is a concept that started in Germany, um, liked it so much and is enjoying this, uh, is, uh, liked it so much that we are going to have the Sailing Championship League Women Final in Portugal this year in October. Uh, so we are expecting all over Europe and eventually from across, across the world, uh, some teams to participate here. Um, because the, it was a success, uh, we want to, to you know, sediment two dates in Portugal for women events. One around October in Cascais, that this year is going to be the Sailing Champions League Women Final, and one in the springtime in Porto. Porto is a very beautiful city in the north of Portugal. It's where the port wine comes from. And it's a super historical um, city that it's, I don't know, super beautiful. And allows you to go to the Douro Valley and, 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 and explore other areas of Portugal. So this is the concept. And, and, uh, and uh, I think we are having a lot of traction with the women. And, um, and really, it's, it's a pleasure to see people getting involved and, 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 and getting interested and, and, and really having an impact yeah. here. <laughs> Carolina, what's your experience? Am I speaking about Palma or what? It was a really fun event and exciting okay. event. The, the format of the racing is quite different as a normal race. From the radiator. About the oh, radiator. <laughs> like, it's We've just got somebody's uh, microphone on there. Who, um, I, can you please... I yes. can read you the the Cheers. No problem. Um, sorry, Catalina, could you start that again about um, your experience yeah, of the um, event? It was a really exciting event and super fun. Uh, the format of the racings were uh, quite different. So uh, it was short races, 50, mi 50 minutes of racing, just go up, wind, downwind, up, wind, downwind. So uh, it was quite stressful because everything counts on the boat you need to be calm you cannot uh, <clears throat> like the round the roundings of the marks and the, the starts uh, so like it, it, it matters you know um mm -hmm. for me me and my team we we were new we we had never sailed together and we were quite new in the boat uh but actually it was really good for us i remember in the first race we won but then in the second, in downwind, the spinnaker went to the water, so we finished last. And then we realized, okay, we can do like really good races, but we can do really bad races. So we need to be calm and we need to work as a team and trying to do our best in each race. And then we understand that all the mistakes count. So then we, we managed to actually do good races and always finish in top four. Uh, and then we went to the final four. And Bashpu was telling, and and it's true. It was super nice because all the all the well, all the women, not all of them, but the most of the girls were doing the event, and so we had girls that already went to the games, and we had girls that uh, are in high school, and we had women that they are moms and they have kids and they sell, they have a boat, and they say to the husband, "Okay, this week I'm going to sell with my friends," and I think that is really cool and. I think this is the message that Vasco want to pass is that girls can can sell and the women can sell and and I mean it's a, it's a good sport uh, and so for me yeah it was a good event and actually we did the event and we love it I, I it was really good and then when we saw that the worlds were um, were going to the next year I talked with my team and we thought, okay, now world is just going to be in 2021, so we have time to prepare. And if we want to do a project, a project and training, uh, I think we can manage to do so. So that's so it's because of the world that we we wanted to do the world to the world. So yeah, I hope so the girls that do the event, things like me, and uh, can uh, join and do more racing because SP20 is a really nice boat. 
uh, well, I do laser, I hike, I do strong, and the boat is not very fast. And when I went to the SB20, I was being the helm, not doing much, uh, well, I don't need to do much strong. So, yeah, it was a fast boat, and yeah, we really like it. So, yeah, for me, it was a nice event, really great. Adelaide, one of the um, things that always interests me when we're talking about getting women on the water or with more women involved in sailing or any sport is actually what, what do women want when they're sailing? What makes the event appealing? Obviously, if you've got someone to look after kids, if you have kids, that's one part of it. But what makes a regatta attractive to women from your perspective? I think it was the environment. Like on the water, everyone did wanted to win, but uh, on the on shore, everyone was friend, and we were just uh, trying to help each other and saying what was our feeling inside the boat. Uh, and I think that was the the special key, you know. Like we were competing, but we were also trying to learn and uh, trying to pass uh, knowledge. Uh, so yeah, I think it was. It, I don't know. It was great. Yeah, uh, and you get some great ma media coverage with Anna Zakova as well, so we always get some nice shots from, from that part of, of Portugal as well, so it's always nice to see that media coverage, um, which is always encouraging, I expect. Um, so could you, while you're talking to us, you've talked a little bit, or we introduced you as, um, as a laser sailor. Um, I think it's worth you telling your story about laser sailing and what your aspirations uh, are, what you, your goals are for sailing. Well, uh, I'm trying to qualify the country for the games right now. And fortunately, I didn't make it yet. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't make it yet. Uh, we have still one event to go. And we have uh, chances. There is four countries left and, uh, and two spots. And I think we, we can do it. So, yeah, now I'm training for that. And for the next Olympic campaign, I don't know if I will continue to sell or not. Um, but if I do, well, I don't know. I don't know if I will sell, if I change boat or if I just stop and sell my boat and uh, buy a SP20 and join the, to the races in Portugal. Um, but definitely when I stop sailing uh, more professionally, I will try to join to SP20 because, well, it's a really nice uh, class in Portugal and we can see that, uh, well, all the people can sell, even the youngest people and the oldest. So. Yeah, the environment is quite nice. People go just to have fun. Um, yeah, I think it, it's quite admirable. We wish you um, the best of luck in your in your Thank endeavors you. to qualify for the for the games. Um, and we, of course, you're always welcome to come to Australia and sail down here with us. We um, will look after you as well. We'll be as, as hospitable as Vasco and the Portuguese in in Cash Cage. Um, I have a question, okay. um, just, just Vasco. Who, regarding the, the women, so we uh, because we want to promote target groups and we want to promote, we have target groups and we want to promote sailing and which one of them has a specific reason to, to, to work. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the case of Carolina, she participated in the WOW. Their team loved the, the boat, loved the ability to be sailing together because being a laser sailor, you don't talk to anyone inside the boat and you don't have anyone to scream about only yourself. So, so it's a, it was a good experience for them in terms of teamwork. So uh, we created a program similar to the, what the French Federation does. We have a bunch of boats available. So we, 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 we talked to Carolina and basically we are putting a boat available to Carolina where they commit to a certain level of training, they commit to a certain level of funding and we assume certain level of risk in order to support their participation along the season. We are doing that because it will be a, a it will, give the example for other women to participate more okay mm -hmm. and, and 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 uh, and basically the mass the message is it's possible for, for people to participate in these events mm -hmm. also we are doing we are supporting a team a youth team from Club Naval Cascais and basically this is the important thing for, for uh, that Carolina mentioned basically I think the sailing in Portugal I think most of the countries is organized around competition and you are in the optimist and then the pyramid goes goes uh, goes uh, shrinks a little bit you go on the laser and the 420 or 470 or 29 then shrinks more so basically we want to allow youth to 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 see that there is a a, a, a sailing beyond those 
Olympic and super competitive, uh, uh, and that the most important is that they enjoy their sailing. So, and, and the other thing that is very important aspect for the youth is the ability to, to teamwork, because probably the SB20 or the J7, in this case, that we, what we have is the, J, the SB20, but any boat that uh, puts four kids together, it's, it's an amazing experience in terms of personal development for them, in terms of stimulating teamwork, uh, and that's something that definitely will help them through all their lives. So basically this is a program that we are putting together and we are supporting two teams, a youth and a, and a women team yeah. that eventually will gain traction and, 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 and eventually will bring more of, of these uh, uh, niches into our, our community of SP20 sellers. Thanks, Vasco. Um, I know that we saw that with our current Australian champion, champions, a, a youth crew that, um, that work very well together and um, uh, hopefully they will we'll get to Portugal. Just um, we've only got a few minutes left. I have a couple of questions. So just on on that point, um, can we get help to uh, to get a women's team to Portugal? Can you help us get a boat for a women's team? Well, uh, well, again, it needs to be discussed at, uh, case by case because Jane, we have so much in our plate over here. What we mm. can try to help again is on the traveling probably do work on the staying so alleviate a little bit from the staying cost definitely it's something that we need to to see where we can help okay that would be great we'll, we'll come back to you on that one and uh, of, i've got another oh, sorry in terms of business uh, the, you, uh, there is one thing that it's of course, the world is a, is a place where the boats have high demand. Uh, and, 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 and of course, prices go up a little bit. But where we have spare capacity, we will, we will be open to, to eventually to help specific teams, uh, specific teams. That would be fabulous. I know we've got some women online tonight who'd be very interested in that. Um, perhaps our last question for tonight, um, unless anyone else has got a, a new question for us, um, will the huge town festival be on at the same time as the world's last time? Clearly that was a highlight of the trip. A jazz festival. Was it a jazz festival? Uh -huh. Yes, there is. A, no, no, but you, you, I didn't understand the word that it was because we have so many festivals around here. That, uh, uh, it was it, a big festival. A big um, uh, a okay. town festival, yeah. Yes, there is. I don't know. It's normally around that time, end of August. End of August, there is what we call the festivities of the sea. And uh, because Cascais used to be, uh, uh, and still is, uh, a fisherman village. So, of course, there is this, uh, and, and it's very, I think it's very South and European that we have this, each village has its own saint or pad, pattern, I don't know how you call it. And, 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 and basically, the, the, there's a lot of uh, festivities uh, revolving around that, 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 uh, that, uh, that at certain time of the year. And in Qashqai, definitely is at the end of August, beginning of September. But I don't know when it's going to be next year. We also have a jazz festival somewhere that spreads along, along the, the... It's not the specific day. It spreads along uh, the whole summer. Probably, you, eventually, you can be blessed with one top jazz player if you... If you, if you if you if you like it and and uh, in one of these majestic uh, sceneries that we have around us i also and around kishka is about it's 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 a really well made uh, uh, movie i posted on the chat is a three three minutes and a half uh, promo video that is really really well made and shows you a little bit of what of what is kishka is of course it's about bias to the good things but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, but it's really a nice one. So if you want to, to have a look at it, it's a, I put it on the chat. Um, Fabulous. Thank you. Question, Vasco, are you the, um, the dealer there, the SB20 dealer, or is there someone? No, that's, that's another thing that I want to tell you. We have, of course, being one of the biggest fleets, uh, we have a local dealer that it's, I think, one of, I don't want to say bad things about the other, but this one is a really good dealer, and it has all the spares. And uh, basically, of course, if you are able to 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 shop in advance or, or talk to them about your intentions in advance, they will really be prepared for you. They are a really, really good team. Uh, and uh, they, are, they are sailors themselves. So basically, they, 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 they know the, about the, 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 the thing. So uh, I can pass you. It's a, a company called Bicasco. Basically, it's two brothers. They, they sell the SP20 with us. They sell catamarans. They, they, are, they, are, they, are in the, they deal the laser. So they are, they are the dealers in, in Portugal. And they are quite good. I remember the last Worlds, there were quite a few women's teams. Um, that was in 2016. So 
you've done well to create to promote the women on water because there was four or five teams back there, and one of them was a French team. They were very competitive. I think they're in the top ten. Uh, top twenty, I think. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. but they were quite good. I think uh, our idea. I was talking to Carolina. If we can reach ten female teams in Portugal, that would be amazing. And that we will count with the help of the Aussie teams, for sure. <laughs> yes, add one of those, the ours in. Um, just going to finish up now, I think one of the nice comments we've got online is from Diogo Costa. Um, he says, hi all, I've been sailing in Cash Page for a while now and I can assure you that it's one of the best places to sail around the world. Um, it's one of those places you have to be fast and very tactical to win races, but at the same time have fun with a super nice and tight down winds. So there's a little bit of encouragement for you to sail there. Um, having spent a little bit too long at one of the restaurants there, I think the only criticism I had was the train didn't um, go after, I think about midnight or so. So <laughs> we had to get the last train home, but um, it was a fabulous place. Um, I'd just like to, to say thank you so much, Vasco and Carolina and Michael for joining us tonight and um, sharing your thoughts and all our people from online that are around the world. We really, really appreciate your um, joining us tonight. Um, our next session on the 2nd of July will be focused on teamwork and tactics. Um, so joining us on that night will be uh, David Chapman, who is uh, the generally the tactician and main shape trimmer, I think, uh, with Export Roo, Michael's team. Um, Chris Dare, Ben Lamb, Brett Cooper and Darren Twirler-Jones. So uh, I know that you will all probably be aware of those guys. So uh, that's in a fortnight's time. Um, I'll just say I've got a couple of last few messages there. A little bit about uh, people's dance moves in um, Portugal. But uh, anyway, great to see everyone tonight. Um, obrigado, obrigado, uh, Vasco, Carolina and everyone online and uh, stay safe. And for those AFL fans who are going to go straight to the Richmond Tigers and Hawthorne game tonight, uh, go the Tigers. Thank you very much and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Jane, Jim, just one thing, I stretch again my message. Anything you need, anything you might need, tell us. Okay, if we don't okay. have it, we will uh, uh, let you know. Just one thing uh, that I forgot to mention, we move boats, okay? We brought 15 boats out of France, okay, to Portugal. So it's 20% mm -hmm. of the fleet, more than 20% of the fleet. So we, we make sure that everything you need around here, you're going to have it. If we don't have it, we're going to pass it to who has it. And we're going to help you around, okay? All Fabulous. the best and thank you very much for, your, for this meeting. It was quite helpful for everybody, I hope. Fabulous, yeah. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Well done, Jane. Oh, good. Are you there? You are, Chris. You're in the middle of the MCG, about to flick a coin or something. Yeah, to one coin enough. I've got to work background. <laughs> yeah, but good job. Well done. So. Thank you. That was um, it was good. Except the recording didn't start till about 20 minutes to go, so I'm horrified. But uh, oh. it it's supposed to naturally, like I've set it up to record automatically. But um, actually, I better end it because.